The usual candidates wanting a Vashat's procedure or a buccal pad pad removal are like these who want a reduction in facial fullness and angular face or high cheekbones and an improvement in the mid face contour. The Bishat's fat pad is divided in four parts and has a complex relationship to the facial structures namely the parotid duct, the facial nerve buccal branches, facial vein and the buccinator muscles. Fat pad is usually divided into an anterior and posterior portion as seen here. I will be removing the main body and buccal extension of this fat pad. The buccal fat pad protrudes in the front of the masseter and from here it extends medially to the parotid duct between the masseter and buccinator muscles and rests on the buccopharyngeal fascia. The anterior limit of this buccal fat pad is where the parotid duct pierces the buccinator muscle. The caudal limit is usually at the retromolar area of the mandible. I now start by marking the parotid duct opening which lies usually in the middle one third of the line which extends from the angle of the mouth to the lower border of the tragus and this is where the parotid duct opens in the vestibule opposite the second molar in this case i am performing an intraoral approach i usually use two types of incision the first type of incision being at the gingival buccal sulcus between the first and second upper molars at this position the stenson duct opening is seen and easily identified within 1 cm superior and lateral to the operating field the second type of incision can also be planned uh, for doing this incision i use a cheek retractor and ask the patient to bite the teeth and make the incision right opposite to the bite a 1.5 to 2 cm incision is usually planned This gingival buccal space is infiltrated with a solution containing a combination of bupivacaine, adrenaline, as well as saline. I start this intraoral approach. I make an incision about two to two point five centimeters into the mucosa using a pencil tip cautery till I reach the buccinator muscle. I then use a long hemostat forceps to spread the muscle fibers of the buccinator with a constant external pressure on the cheek. The buccal fat pad will usually get exposed at this point and one then pierces the fascia. With constant external pressure on the cheek, the fat is held with a Babcock's forceps very gently and using a long hemostat I gently start to spread the fat. Sometimes I may find difficulty in finding the fat. In these circumstances, I place a suction tip at the opening and the fat usually pops out. Without doing excess traction, the protruding fat is grasped and gently teased into the field i identify the base and then clamp and cauterize the vessel at the base i try not to put excessive traction on this fat and not remove too much of fat the usual volume of this fat is usually around 10 ml i close the wound with a 50 vital suture